Yo, Skepta, amazing time right now. It's like top five album this week. You, you changed the game. You've done things that no one else has done. Truly independent, and you've done what you said you was gonna do. How does it feel? It's mad. It's like it's like a trip, like a mad trip. Like we're number one in the chart today. It got announced on radio with my album and like. <clears throat> Like the man them are saying, oh, you get me now, man, Beyonce is going to knock man off. And uh, and we're like, well, listen to the names that we're even saying, yeah. like, that we're competing with. We're just like, like, we just make music and upload it to the internet, like, independent. And we get to, like, speak those names around ours, man. It's like, <clears throat> like a mad trip. It must be crazy, though, the experience, because you, you said you were going to do it and you've done it and you've done it your way, like... Right now, it's like, how does it feel? Yeah. Boy, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I can see it, it's there, you get me, and I can I just use it, like, when I want to. I can get gassed off it, or I can be humble with it, you get me? But, like I said, yeah, like, even, like, all these other things that are happening now, these are all bonuses for me, because, for me, like, the mission is completing it, like, mm. to actually have gone around the world like to different cities and different places and not just gone to the place and like done my show and bus out, you get me? I've gone to these places like, I've worked with people that are like myself in this, in that city, do you know what I'm saying? Like made true relationships like, so greater things can happen. And for me, <clears throat> that that is the mission complete. So everything else now is just like, yeah, I'm just gonna enjoy this point. Today, this week, it's like, it's the victory lap, well deserved. But before we get into the music and everything else, I just wanted to take it back to when you were coming through, when you were growing up. Like, what was it like growing up in North London? Boy, <clears throat> it's just the roads, isn't it? The roads is there, it's the roads, it's mad. It's just always going to be mad, but I just think, like, from my household, like, I always had, like, a mad, like, Nigerian strict teaching, you get me? So when I come out, it was like, it was always a separate world to me. You get me? I'd be involved in stuff here, but I wasn't like, I wasn't, I wasn't wild. Or I didn't, I, I just fought into everything that I did. You get what I'm saying? Or I never believed that the road was going to be like, what made like, I'm going to become like a famous or successful drug dealer. Do you get what I'm saying? For me, it was a teaching. <clears throat> the road is a sick teaching because we always trying to understand the minds of like, success in it to get off the roads but like someone who's born into success and who doesn't know about the roads when bad things happen to them that's why they crumble it or they start smoking crack or they just start sniffing taking mad drugs because they don't they've never had to understand that mind before just you know what i'm saying but with, with me like growing up in london has taught me everything that i know giving me all the tools i need to travel like the world and just do what i want to do like like as a man What's the first album that meant anything to you? Ooh. Probably Ready to Die. Probably Ready to Die. Why? Um, it'll be a battle between that and Doggy Style. Just because it was more than music, man. It was like the skits, like the slang. Everything was a movie. Like it was all it, it, I bought into the into the artists, into the into the world that they built, and like the Biggie's world to me was just sick. You know what I'm saying? It was very like <clears throat> the way he raps is very like like old school toasting, like Grime MC. It's not that it's not that deep. Like mm. you know what I'm saying? But it's like very to the point. He speaks about like coming from a mad place and using that to to win. You get what I'm saying? And to me, that's. That's the greatest teaching in life. They both, both Snoop and Big, they had that clarity as well. You could hear every single word that they said when they rapped. Mm. Kind of got that yourself as well, but you do it much quicker as well. Like, at the same yeah, time. yeah. Like, it's like, I had to learn to, to appreciate that my style as well. Because especially in the scene I'm in, it's like a, everyone criticises each other in it. So people be like, oh, Skeptic's basic. Oh, he only rhymes like one word or rare tear, rare tear. You get me? So I had to learn to appreciate that what I was doing was its style. It was it was it was sick. You get what I'm saying? I listen to I don't know Barrington Levy like songs that have got like uh, 
four bar hook and it's repeated four times over the tune and there's little like bridges. Right. I've grown up on songs like that. So it's never about the deepness or anything like that for me. It's always about <clears throat> writing that, that bar that's going to stand the test of time. You know what I'm saying? Like people are just rapping it. I don't get lost in all that rap stuff. Like I wait to live my life and something will happen. I'll be like, rah, no one said that in a bar before. Or, yeah. or I'll be like someone, nobody's, nobody, everyone's scared to say that. Mm. And I'll say it, you know, them ones. So it's, it's, it's more about me communicating that message over rather than getting all involved in the rap and all the pockets and all, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't do pockets and that. What made you pick up the mic? Um, yeah, when I look, I've always like had lyrics and stuff like that, but when like a shooting happened where I used to live and the police took all my records, so when I was DJing for JME before, now I was, I had nothing to do kind of thing. So Wiley heard of JME, he called him to come to the studio. And then, but the studio was in South, you get me? And I was like, I didn't want my brother to go there on his own. Mm. So I've gone there with him when I've gone in the studio. Like, I remember Wiley just telling me, man, you should just, you should write like a gram lyric. And I wasn't, like, I don't know. For me, it was just like something that I didn't, it wasn't my style. I wasn't into it or the kind of ways that I saw people moving and like blah, blah, blah. Like I just didn't feel it. So I waited, I went home. I remember I was chilling, just doing whatever, exactly what I said I'd do. I was just doing what I was doing. I was doing that. And then I thought of the lyric, like, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this one. And then I did it, and I remember going. I remember going to like sets with Roll Deep, and, and I only had like one, two, sixteens. But I was in. Them guys were heavy, heavy in by that time. You get me? But it was good. It gave me the drive to write more, and I wanted to be the best MC in the in a rave every time. So it just made me go harder. What did Jamie say when he heard your first bar? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't. Do you know what? I don't even. I don't even know if Jamie rated me at the beginning, or uh, because like. Or how did you reveal to him that yo? I'm kind of doing this now as well. No, nah, Jamie always... I don't, I don't know, probably, you see, he probably always thought one day I was going to spit. You get me? I was just trying to find my feet or whatever, but um, my whole attitude and approach to the game was different to his as well, so I don't know how, if even if he even liked me, I'm seeing on this, this everyone thing, because that's how I came out. I was clashing everyone. So, and he's not like that. He's not on all that. Like, he'll back it and do that MC ones, but he's not on all that getting involved with other people. Like, you get what I'm saying? So... Yeah, I don't even know if he even rated that. I mean, what was it like growing up with your family? Because you got your brother who's spitting, mm. you got your sister who she's gone on her own path, and you got another younger brother who's doing something artistic. Like you, you, you got, you got like a crazy family. It's like an industry in its own right. But like, do you guys challenge each other. What was it like? Yeah, yeah, I think like. It must be like, you, you like like must be your scene, harshest critics, it? innit? Yeah, it's like, it's a, it is a little scene, like, in my house. It's our own scene. Like, even though me and Jamie, like, we're brothers and that, we always will try and make, like, something a better album than our last ones and each other's, you know what I'm saying? Or not always collaborate with each other and do a thousand songs with each other because we're brothers and stuff like that. It's still always been there, even as kids, whether it was Mario Kart, Street Fighter, or whatever it was, you get me? So, yeah, now... <clears throat> Now it's good to know the competition's there, but we can still help each other as well, mm. you get me? Like I put, f yeah, three productions of my of my youngest brother Jason on my album, on Konnichiwa, you get me? And uh, that made me, that that made me happy to be able to do that for him, you get me? And um, yeah, my sister's found her, her way in, in music and Jamie's, you know, just enjoying his fruits of his labor right now. So yeah, it's a blessed man. I don't, you know, I just thank God man with myself, blessed family. What what was it in your household that instilled that though? Because you've you've all gone into music, you're all doing something creative, like what was it that you could say, you know what, that was down to that? Because is it is it is it your parents playing music or was it is it one of your members of the family like were they an artist? Because it doesn't happen. Like yeah, families just... in families it doesn't happen like that. Boy. It's like a big mix of things, isn't it? Like I think like <clears throat> A lot of the freeness and that our outspoken style comes from my mum, you know what I'm saying? Because she, like, she's just like that. From a, from a very young age, she was... We went to, like, a a church school and that, yeah, but, like, 
after we left the school and my mum was like, guys, she brought us up as on a, on a realist, on a realist level, you get what I'm saying? Like, she was like, this is what it is, this is how life is, it's this time, it's now. Mm-hmm. Like, everything in the past kind of doesn't exist no more and there's no future until we get there. So enjoy and do what you got to do kind of now. So she gave us that real, like, now free spirit vibe that you see in all of us, you get me? And then my dad now, he was DJing, so as a kid, right. I've always heard my dad selecting. Right. <clears throat> so there'll be, like, a song that I would hear in the house for, like, a year then it might, he might stop playing it, then a new one comes in. What style of music? Like reggae. Right, okay. Um, so then through that, I'm just learning that songs can come in, in and out of fashion, when to say, you get what I'm saying? When to say brat, when to say take it back. Yeah. Like I'm learning all these mannerisms from him and like my uncles when they come into the house, innit? So I think initially, me knowing how, like, how to like, bust up a dance, is through like my dad, right. like musically. Right. You get what I'm saying? I'd always see my uncles, I'd see what makes them like the tune, like where the bass comes in, like where it makes them go, you know what I'm saying? Like, but then the other side for my mum, so it's a combination, man. I'm blessed to have them too as parents still. How did you get that balance of doing the roads and doing the music? Because again, people either end up doing one or the other and they don't. I don't know, man. And it's for me, it's like, that is the number one, like, it's the number one thing that's like holding any artist on the road. And especially like now, you know, I'm becoming more successful in in achieving my goals and and I've realized what I've had to do to do that. I can easily see now as well, all the other people who, they look at me like, oh, skeptical man, like, and I'm like, bruv, you're just a sick fam, like, Hmm. you're sick. You get what I'm saying? But it's just like that paranoia that you get from the roads is mad. Like almost for you not to be able to see that you've got a chance that many people don't get. Like many people don't get. Like I said, when I was on the roads, yeah, I was I was about, I was like, you get me? I was about, but in my mind, I always knew this is temporary. You know what was you doing on the roads? Without shot self-incrimination. In. I was a shot in. Right. Yeah, I was a shot in. You get me from lower levels to higher levels to when I was knee deep in it. You get me, but to me, even when I was flipping, all my re up money was going on records and stuff like that. Yeah. I'd be that kind of whack shotter that would spend my re up money on records. You get what I'm saying? But then I'd try and get my gyro and fix back up, reloading. You see what I'm saying? All them mad ones because my mind was on my music. It always was, and like I think, especially today. Like, people realising that they have a chance to get out of the hood, like... And that comes with everyone else helping what's going on as well. This this is why you hear me, like, moaning at radio and moaning at telly, because we need to show these kids that they what they're doing is worth something. Otherwise, if they don't think it's worth something, they're going to concentrate more on the roads than they are on the music, fam. You get me? And it's just, it's just taking use every day. And there's be- so many bangers coming from these kids every day. And like I said before, <clears throat> It's like someone in Africa will make a big Afrobeats tune, Mansion. You know what I'm saying? Chief Keef, top off, house arrest, don't like, big yard, everything. But then people in UK, we make bangers for years and years and years and stuff, and no one doesn't get nothing, bruv. No one, no one can't move out, say, you know what, I did a big song, I got supported by everyone, it got to a nice place, I, got, I can move out of the area, I can get myself together and blah, 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 because, like, it needs, like, that's the... That's my my when I wake up every day, if there's people like, oh like, why is Skip like you're never smiling or whatever? Well I do I'm I'm if people know me, I'm a very happy guy, but yeah. most of that pain in me is to know that just because I'm cool, like, or just because like I used to, I'm, I'm not one of them people, but I don't run off. You get mm-hmm. me? I don't find stuff up find stuff out and run off on the mandem, but I tell the mandem everything that I know, you get me? And like to me, it's like just because I'm good, it's not done. Cause it's the number one thing that's like hurting all these youths, they need to understand, like, the paranoia from the road, they need to ignore that, like, ignore that, all that stuff. It only exists in your mind if you let it. You don't even see these people anyway, everyone that says they're looking for Skepta. Oh, when I see Skepta, I'm going to... You don't see me. Mm. How are you going to see me, fam? Like, I'm doing greatness every day. You can't see me, fam. And if you do see me, fam, then whatever way, if God wants me to buck someone in 
<coughs> LA in Starbucks at 7.30 in the morning, fam, he will make that happen. Trust me. Or you know, you think you ain't going to see someone, you just buck them in a mad place and you're mm. like, wow, for real, God. That's how, that's how God works. So you can't even pre all these beefs or you're online all the time, you get me? People are always online, so they'll see retweets of like their ops and that. So mm. they're just keeping their mind. Mm. It's just mad that whole to, to, to get rid of that in my mind and like, just concentrate on the greatness that's happened. I could just say, look, this opportunity that I've got, I know that there's there's millions of people that wish they could do that. How did you end up living in Manchester? Boy, that was just the roads again. That was just the roads again, trying to move out my, out my area to not be bait, you get me? Trying to find a new spot and just ended up staying there and just linking up different people up there. What was it like at that time? That was like, That was like, uh, obviously, because I wasn't in my own ends yet. Like, I was a bit worse than I was than when I was in the end, because obviously you're no more, your house isn't there. Like, I was not, I was just a statistic up there. So it's very greasy, very greasy and money. Mm. Yeah, man. Did you learn anything that you didn't learn, like, doing your things in London? Or did you see, do you come oh, no, a different no. way of doing things? No, no, no. I just think it was just more fast, like, it was more fast, it was more greasy, it was less, like... Obviously, I knew every I, I knew places and stuff in London. And when I was there, I was very like, just like anywhere and everywhere doing whatever I could to survive for the next ten minutes. You get me? But yeah, those are the times that. How did you? At what point did you lock off the roads? At what point was it like? You know what? That's it. Like, what what would you say? Like in your musical timeline, when would you say that was the time when I locked everything off and just focused on music? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if I just, if I could say that the road is locked off to me because I'm still about. But the the time I put down that I never was doing any like selling drugs again was like probably microphone champion times when I did that tune with gigs. Just round about that time, like separating myself from it, and it's a bit of a limbo period, isn't it? Because you're not really getting that much money from like shows and that. So it's a bit of a mad time, but the transition, like if you believe like it's what obviously like it's worth it, isn't it? It's interesting because around that time, the music you was putting out, you took a lot of creative risks that mm. it's, it's, that a lot of people wouldn't do today. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't think it affected your credibility from where you are today and from when you got to that point where you put out it and it's safe, yeah. but it, was that deliberate or was it just like you experimenting? What's that with Blacklisted? Um, before then? With Microphone Champion. Like, oh. Because you are doing different styles. You were doing like, you were doing like funky, you were doing like mm. bass line, you were doing different collaborations with different people. For me, man, I'm just like, I'm a music head at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Mm. At the end of the day, I'm a music head and that's what I'm always going to be. So, <coughs> like trying out different stuff, I'm probably going to always do that. Sometimes I'll get it wrong. Sometimes I get it right, you get what I'm saying? And that's, an, and like, but I've accepted that now as well, you get me? I try out different styles. And I don't know, and when I say get it wrong, it, it might just mean to me that maybe it didn't come out how I thought it was going to come out. Mm. That's that's the only, you know, measure in that. But like, um, yeah, because I'm, I'm a London boy and I've got so many like different cultures and people around me all the time. I hear, I've done like Turkish songs, like a Japanese, Chinese, um, Afro beats, you get what I'm saying? Funky, like I've done like all of it because I've got all of that kind of, I've got every kind of vibe in my system, you know what I'm saying? So I'm always going to be eclectic in that way. Two years ago, we connected and you said to me, I'm never going to make another commercial record again. Mm. I was like, ah, I was like, I was like, okay, like that's, you know, because that's, that's a pretty big sweeping statement. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of artists have done the commercial thing and it's backfired and they're not mm. popping like they were. Mm. But you tried the commercial thing. Mm. I don't think you hindered or you did anything that, it, it, you know, damaged your rep or whatever because mm. you were just open with it. You were doing different tunes with different artists and mm. you, you did an assault on a chart or whatever, your way and whatever. But then you came out with That's Not Me. And it was like, 
it was like a clear cutting point. It was like, that's done, mm. this is done. Mm. And then it's around the same time when we met and you said, I'm never going to do a commercial yeah. tune again. Yeah. What was it that gave you that kind of impetus to do that? Because that's like, you know, you, at the same time you've locked off the roads, mm. focusing on the music, you tried to sort the chart, might not have gone to plan the way that you thought it did. But then you're like, I'm just doing grime. I'm just doing like Wall Street music. Like, mm. what was the catalyst that made you come to that conclusion and believe in yourself? Because a lot of people wouldn't have done it. A lot of artists wouldn't have done it. They haven't. I just think I just think it just got to the point where it sent me mad, didn't it? Or maybe like my age, I was getting to an age where I was becoming like a man. But the whole thing just sent me mad. <laughs> and you see it happening to loads of different artists. You get what I'm saying? Like, like when Britney cut off her hair. You see what I'm saying? Like it's just a point where you just you just realize like well, like I'm not happy like I'm waking up and I'm making music but I remember doing this because I liked it. You get me? And then I did um, the underdog psychosis video. It was like a 25 minute video. I was just talking to my camera. That's how I could tell I was getting mad. Cause I, I was just talking to my Mac screen and I uploaded it. You get me? I uploaded it. But then. It's kind of mad how like that kind of stuff works because when you say like where well, you feel out, it's like the feedback I got from it. I thought, raw, this is mad. Like people are fuck, people are like feeling what I'm saying. You get me? So it pushed me into a, into a position where I was like, bro, you just released that sick. It was in a tape, modern. Like there was headphones you can listen to and watch it and that. You get me? So I put myself in a put in a position where I couldn't go. I can't turn back. I've just put out like this statement saying like, "Do you like all this other stuff? Doesn't matter. Like everyone, all this like society and status and like these levels and all that. It doesn't exist. This is all perception. You get what I'm saying? Like you, you just have to look at the world from your. This is my world. You get what I'm saying? I created this. You create everyone else. I don't exist without everyone else either. Do you get what I'm saying? But at the same time, I need to do me. Firstly, I need to do me, and like from that, I think Blacklisted the mixtape came out from that. Mm. A lot of the stuff I was talking about on that mixtape, I could hear it was a lot of underdog psychosis stuff. I think I even mentioned it a couple of times on on the CD, and then yeah, that just put me in a point where people were like, "Yo, like this guy is gonna do what he wants, mm. when he wants, how he wants," and it was just a short time between like Blacklisted and, and that's not me. It just keeps going and keeps going like. I don't know where I'm going to end up, what I'm going to end up doing, but it's definitely in the right direction for freedom and for truth. How did it in the safe come about? Oh, that... I know, like, I didn't expect you to do that. I was yeah. happy that you did. It's one of my favourite joints. That's one of my favourite tracks, like, of all time. But I didn't expect that from you. I don't know, it was crazy. Like, I just had I had a loop of a beat in my computer for time. And when I went to New York, we was in the studio working. I was with working with Dev Hines on my album, for a track for my album. And then, um, yeah, Young Lord was in there. And I was, I was like, yo, man, let's make a track. Like, let's make a track. And he was like, oh, I don't rap in it. I was like, all right, listen, I, t- I sang this chorus to him. I was like, try it, like, let's try and say this. But like, he doesn't rap in it, so he said it like a bit different than it sounds now. You get me? But we chopped it up. You get me? Jigsaw puzzled it. And yeah, I remember just playing it on loop, the, the hook, yeah, and like everyone in the studio was just vibing, like, and I was like, all right, cool. I know what I've got to do. And I'd just been, I'd have been listening to Free Six, like, just religiously for a long time. So that whole, like, the style was like, as soon as I heard the beat, and I was like, right, okay, I'm going to give them that Pat style, mm-hmm. you get me? Like a London, tell my London story in that style. And like, I don't know. That song massive. Yeah. That song is massive. I'm like they they sing out of protest and that. You get me? It's bigger than me. Mm. Like, but I like that. It's still like a low key song. Yeah. You get me? When did you start feeling the heat from America? Because again, again, when when we when we hooked up, you were like, you 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 were like, oh, oh, Sam, it's mad. Like, I'm cool all of a sudden, kind of thing. It's like yeah. you started attracting. Like tastemakers, which even me, I was like, wow, because it's like you know, like I think everyone's been in the US thing for so long. It's it's been rare to see people from America like gravitating towards mm. an artist doing their thing over here. But like, when did you start to feel that? Um, 
<coughs> I, I, like, everyone's kind of doing the same thing now, especially with the internet, yeah? Like, everyone's making beats and rapping. Like, we need to get all that. People, when I see people say, oh, look, I just can't get past the accent, or I'm not just talking about America, I'm talking about anyone, like, I can't get past the accent. I'm like, bruv, if you are actually still saying that today, you are very behind, you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like... Mm -hmm. The way the world is now, but you have to speak to anyone. And I think, again, going back to London, yeah, that's an, that I can speak to people. Like, I can talk, I can communicate with people, you get what I'm saying? And me knowing that, when I was looking at people like Rat King and, um, like, the zombies, you get what I'm saying? Like, how they like how they would just be on, on the roads and just rap, like, World's Fair, just, like, rap to camera. I'm like, yo, that's what <coughs> I do. And for a long time... Since the Smack DVD days, I never, I never saw anything where it was about the rapping. Mm. It was always about who's going out with who, or who's having a fight with who, or who's robbed whose chain and stuff like that. Like, but in from where we're from, a man could do a freestyle tomorrow, and he's the hottest guy in mm. London. You see what I'm saying? From a freestyle, because it's always been about the bars over here. So when I saw like Rat King and them and World's Fair, etc., going on No Wave and spitting, that's when I was like, yo, I, I want to do that. I, I, they're not going to make a big deal that I'm from London or whatever. I'm just going to spit my bars because I believe that I can spit good bars and my bars are true. Mm. So I, I kept going over to, the, like, over to New York when I had time and freestyling on No Wave where I could. And then people just like started hearing of me like around there and people just started showing love, man, like in the clubs and that one, ran on the streets like in Soho. Or I go uptown, like everywhere I'd go, they'll just be start showing love. You get me? But then obviously, like ain't safe, and the that's not me remix that I did with Wiki. Them two songs, like proper, like solidified that it wasn't just a rumor. Like man was making bangers. How did how did you and Drake like first hook up working together? Or how did he start paying attention to what you're doing? Um. Do you know what? That's a mad question because I can't tell how he heard of me, and I I will never know. Like, but I'll put I'll put my money on that. He just found me searching online for music because that's what he's like. Like, he's a music lover. You get what I'm saying? That's someone who he like he likes music. I don't think he's here for anything else. For like, so he just found me, man. He just found me and raided what I did. You get me? And for me, it was a blessing that he was co-signing me. You get what I'm saying? Or that he was bigging me up. Because I was still going to do what I'm going to do anyway. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to do me. like, and But him shouting me out, especially, like, even when they shout me and be like, yo, Skep, like, are you good? Like, you need a thing. I told them, yeah, I'm good, fam. Like, I'm all right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't ever want them to feel like, you know, because they've co-signed me now, they owe me, like, blah, 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 or, like, beat down, hand them. I don't want, like, I'm cool, you get me? But I'm just blessed, you know, to have them, man, supporting. Like, I went, like, my album came out on the 6th when I was in Toronto. Um, it's like being at home, like mm. the way they've got me out there is mad. So, yeah, man, it's a blessing, and I'm, and you know, I'm sure he just found me by keeping his ear to the to the ground and listening to out for what's what's fresh and what's new. So, it looks it looks like you two got a good friendship, a good working relationship. What, like, have you have you picked up anything from the way that he moves or what he's doing? Because in in the US, like as far as hip, he's the top of the game mm. in the US right now. Mm. But is there anything that you know, it's one of them things that you are who you know, and it's one of them things you always pick up jewels from people yeah. who are making moves and stuff. Oh well, yeah, I'd like, like I said, first of all, I'm like, I'm blessed. He could, like, he's co-signed bare people before. You get me? And they ain't done what I've done. Mm. So it's so it's not a thing where I'm trying to hang on to what he's doing. I'm literally saying, fam, I'm blessed to, for what he's for for the co-sign. And I'm just moving forward and just learning that. When I look at his team, yeah, that's a serious team, fam. That's not mm -hmm. a joke. Like, that's a serious team. You get me? So I have to know that, yeah, my operation has to be just as serious as well. Like, from, from the streets to the road, to up to the industry. You know what I'm saying? I, I need to be able to walk in and talk to people in labels if I want to do something, but still be able to have... I can walk on. I can walk on my ends anywhere I want to. You get me. So it, he he definitely showed me that it's a serious operator, and he's doing it. If I'm doing it independent, so I'm like, right, I got to, I got to step my game up. Like mm -hmm. super, everyone in my team. If I ask for something, there's no I'm in an arm, and like we have to get this done. 
because even though we're not, you know, we ain't got as much money and as much funds as these big labels and that, but I need to show them that my vision can be, I can bring out with just my mind. It was good that you brought him down to the Section Boys show on the same night at the Brits. Like, that's a real significant thing because I don't know which got more attention. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, I, that's, I love doing that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sugarcoating nothing, but... Some man would be selfish with the with the shine, innit? Yeah, like, I don't try and give it to... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, nah, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know when... I don't know if it's going to take for me to die or for people to for, to understand that I was... I've always been out for everyone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm, I'm a braggadocious person, so it might look like sometimes I'm being a bit... Like, I'm doing it for personal reasons but I, I always do stuff for my friends but I'm a man that I'll fly like all my friends out to some I don't care how much money it costs me I just want to have a good time <coughs> get me and I just want all the man them to, to just to just to do good bro because we come from a like a dead shit place you get what I'm saying so uh, bringing out Drake at section on the day of the Brits is 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 them, them kind of things they make me happy you've always been a champion of new talent like Crept and Conan when they were coming through you put them on your tour, they said that they learned a lot from you from doing that. Like Fecky section, like recently Daniel OG, you were like the first to tweet that video, and like people pay attention when you highlight new talent like that. Mm. Like, how do you feel like where the grime scene is at the moment or the UK rap scene? I think it's the in the best place that it could ever be. I think it's only gonna get better. <clears throat> you know, I hope that. Like, I'm just another, you know, example that you can do it. You know what I'm saying? You're like, worst ways with no label or nothing, like, with a good team, you can do it. You get me? And that's what I've always wanted. you got to remember, like, I'm old school, you get me? So I was around when Manu was rapping in American accents on the telly, bruv. Yeah. You get me? Man, I rap, like, brothers that you know from the ends and they're rapping in American accents, bruv. And I'm like, it's mad. Like, that's crazy. So... You know, I'm fully behind, like, I'm fully supporting, like, everything in London. You see me, I tweet everyone. Any ends, mm. there's a matter, bruv. Even, even, like, even my ops, bro. I don't care. I, if, if they've got a banger, I'll, I'll tweet the tune, fam. Mm. Because at the end of the day, that, my personal what's going to happen in real life, if anything, that's going to happen anyway. Like, but the music for me and everyone, like, and, like, the city being on the map and everyone eating together for me, is more important because that way we have, like, we've got a sound, like, we've got people going to have kids that are going to have to find jobs in that. If we make a proper scene, you know, these are the times, like, the early J times, early Jay-Z mm. times, you get me? That's what I'm at now, it's so true. I'm trying to set it now. Because hip-hop, you know, like, 15 years in, people saying it's a fad, it ain't going to work and stuff mm. like that. And it's kind of like, I think with the grime scene, you're kind of at that similar point where... It's still very early, it's still growing, but there's the stars starting to come out and like like yourself, you've proven made history this week, number one album, mm. um, independent label. And what what's your take on the clashing situation like with Chip and Bugsy Malone, like what went down like last year? Oh uh, I don't know, man. For is that me, good for the scene? I don't I don't I don't know what their settings is, isn't it? I don't know mm. I don't know if it's if it is musical or what it is, you get what I'm saying? Like I'm all for musical clashes and all that, but right now, like, clashes can happen, That, but even the whole thing of when I'm saying, when I said, um, I don't know why Chip mentioned my name, this is because, like, a week and a bit prior to this, yeah, me and Chip, we've sat down, like, for hours, and I said to him, bro, I was like, fam, like, right now, a serious thing's happening, and we need to be putting out music, mm. yeah, and pushing the sound, like, and pushing our thing, like, forget all that clashing stuff, like... It isn't, it isn't, like, do your dub, whatever, let's allow it now. And he was like, yeah, okay, cool, you're right. You get me, you're right, blah, 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 blah. Then he done a dub and said my name in it. Like, I grew up on Skepta, so that's why I was like, fam, mm. come on. You see what I'm saying? Because, I, like, I just, bro, obviously I clash Devil Man and that, but I do it in my way where it's, it's progressive, fam. I want to put on a big show with Devil Man. Like, I can be in the same place as him, you get what I'm saying? Mm. Like... I, 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 I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say I'm against clashing because that's what the whole sound is about. But at the same time, we need songs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we need, we need songs right now to make it so you can go places and hear, like especially festival. Cause I don't really like hearing my songs in clubs anyway. Yeah. I don't think I fit in to that 
the sound that what it's for my my something separate but you know just that different shows there should be more of our music like sets so for DJs to play Kanichi word album several years in the making you said you came up with the title four years ago a little while ago I can't yeah. remember sometimes yeah. these numbers get mad yeah Three. what didn't make the album because oh, the so album's much. dope and everyone's raving about it at the moment people yeah. are buying it but is there anything that you're like mm, maybe I should have put that on it nah man I feel justified of the album, like 12 tracks, like, it's not even the number of tracks, it's just the story, it's the, the movie, you know what I'm saying, like, that, that's a movie to me, bruv, that is, like, a, it's a classic, bruv, Konnichiwa to me is a classic, because I don't make music for today and everyone's going to judge what I did in two years, they're going to tell me today, bruv, <laughs> it's been out for a week, I can't hear that, so, I make music to know, like, in, like, three years' time, a man said, oh, I remember like, when thing like, like, yeah, like you listen to my album, but we're going to realise that like, he marked that time. I marked, yeah. I marked this time. And for me, I was justified with the tracks that was on there. But there was a lot of music <coughs> that was cool. There's a lot of music that didn't make it. And there's, there was enough music that didn't make it. I could have had like a 17 track album. But for me, it's not about the numbers. It's about, I knew I was, I knew I had an obligation to, to put the city on the map tell it how it is, you get me, and and tell my story at the same time. Do you have any doubts? Did I? Yeah, when you were, make, when you were doing this, like this, because you, you had a manifesto, you had an agenda, you made an album. Mm. Did you ever think like, boy? Yeah, I did, man. And that always happened when I thought about someone else, you get what I'm saying? Like, it was when I bring someone else into consideration, I start being like, mm -hmm. Whenever I'm thinking about my happiness, I never was like that. Like, I always enjoyed making what I was making. That's why I had to take breaks, like, like it's hot today. T nowadays it's different, fam. Like you just not it's not fan melting. Like mm. men are getting fan melt to their phones in the morning. Like brothers are checking their phone before they've even brushed their teeth and that. So you're getting all this stuff said to you. Even the good stuff, all of it. Like it's just mad for your mind, isn't it? So you're trying to make music from a place, like, and all this stuff's like. Then I was, t like, touring the world. My voice ain't good after that show. I come back, I try and do studio, it's all mad. Like, I was juggling, man. I was definitely juggling, but yeah, man, I'm proud of Konnichiwa, man. I'm, when I listen to it, there's so much pain. You know, laughs, tears, death, birth in the CD, like everything that happened in the last two years. Like, like I said, I just ran through that finish line and I, I drop on the floor and drink the water. I don't really care how I ran the race, you get me? When was the Konnichiwa track, the first track made, like track one? Oh, ooh. Mm, that must have been made when, just after I come back from Nigeria, like January, January this year, 16. Yeah, of course, I always get, I can't explain. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it was January. Okay. Yeah, man. But I changed the beat to that so many times. Yeah. Like, fam, the album been delayed for like kick drums and that. Like, you yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, so that's why, like, after I fine tuned it all and it's been like, we've broken it down and done everything to it. For me to be able to put it out, I was like, I was at a definite happy point. But yeah, that intro is one of my favorite tracks off there. Yeah. Killing the game, championing the new talent, supporting the scene, supporting the talent. Things are good for you, like. What was the the reference? Fix up, look sharp, and respect me. You're not the greatest MC in the country. No. Like, what was that all about? No, I, like the intro and that, like I just. Dizzy Rascal was like that's a that's a very very relevant person in my scene in it. So that's not the first time I would like take his lyrics and flip it. You get me? I always like, I always like flip. And like people's bars in my bars, I'll flip them. But some people are saying you're sending. Yeah, some people are saying that I'm sending in the intro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nah, I wasn't sending for Dizzy in the intro. I write a lot of bars about types of people in it. So yeah. people, if the shoe fits anyone, they can wear it if they want to. You know what I'm right. saying? But I'm always going to be somebody who is, I'm that, I'm like that granddad on the porch that's like this and all the shit I don't like, you get what I'm saying? That's what I'm like. That's what makes me spit. 
Like, that's that's what that's what makes me. That's what made me MC in the first place. Remember, I mm. came in saying swag MC burial. Right. I came in saying I don't want no more rubbish in the scene. You know right. what I'm saying? So that's the always. That's where I'm always at. So I always be saying something, but it's not always directed at someone. So who's not the greatest MC in the country? <laughs> Anybody, like, I don't know. It's like, it's just, it's this bars, man. I throw them out, you get me? Right. I throw, it's like bait. Like, I throw out, anybody wants to pick it up and say, oh, it's, is this about me? Let's clash. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, if anyone wants to take my bars to them, you can reply back to it, and I'll just reply back. Okay. Annihilate the thing. And then I'm mad. I just because I've just got to, like what everyone's talking about, like what the streets are talking about right now as well. And then that thing with the kid online who's joined the dots with man and the interviews. Where oh yeah, the man one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's all nuts as well. Again, you get what I'm saying. Like a lot of people have had a good solo career and big songs over the years, and that. So it's anybody who wants to take that. Yo, yo I'm out for truth. I'm out for revenge, fam. Right. I'm out for revenge, fam. I come into this thing pure-hearted. You know what I'm saying? Loving music. And people try to take me for an idiot. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I spit now, people are going to hear a madman. They're going to hear a monster. They're going to hear somebody who's out for revenge. And I'm out for revenge. So a lot of people, it, so, a, someone who owns a radio station could take certain things I'm going to say as well to, their, to, the, to what they're saying. But anyone who wants to take it, they could take it and do what they want to do because I'll back my talk to that. Like, I'll back what I'm saying. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But... If I wanted to diss somebody directly, like I did a nasty, I'll do it. Like these, all these tunes like I'm doing now, they're just like, you get me? They're just like juggling, I'm a mic, man. Who's the top five grime MCs? Oh. I don't know, man, I don't know. <laughs> too, I, don't, I, don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have a top five, man. I think that grime, the grime scene's one of the most sickest, diverse, like, scenes ever. But when it comes to styles, like, there's so much, like, you so much than any other scene. You get me there's bare different styles like and that's why it's for me it's one of the greatest. There's gotta be like there's gotta be like five MCs that you're like, you know what, this this inspires me or these men are these man. I mean Jamie's gotta be in it, right? Like Jamie's like Jamie's like I don't even know what he <coughs> is, bruv. <coughs> he's him to me, he's just like a he's like for me, he was my angel that God sent to me to keep me, like he's just an eternal, ongoing. Jamie's not had like a peak in his career. He hasn't had like a down bit. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't had like, uh, or it's just like that, you know what I'm saying? So he's he goes about saying, someone, someone who I think's got such big things coming for him and not on a bias one, Frisco for me. Like Frisco, he like, he's always had the clarity. Like he's someone I could phone and go bar for bar like just going in, you get me? But I think for a lot of us, it just took for all of us to take the step together to know that we can be greater, you know what I'm saying? And now that he's seen what he can do, like he's doing so well with his singles that he's putting out now, he's 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 raved that he's got going on, all the stuff that he's doing, he's seeing raw, like I can get this. And I think that if once that hunger, if it has settled in, like if a bit more time of that hunger, I think Frisco's gonna do sick stuff. Um, DWE is always gonna be, like legend for me, um, President T. That's a god right there. Um, um, and I love I love novelists as well, man. I love novelists' understanding of the sound. It's good you put him on the lyrics track. That's yeah, it's like, a big statement. Like the second track in on your album, it's like he's gonna get a lot of global attention on the back of that. It's a banger yeah, as well. Man. He understands like he 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 really understands like the style and, like, the sounds of, like, what what we're trying to do, like, with what we're doing. Because I don't really even separate, like, me from a gigs mm. or, like, I don't know, like a Frisco from 6-7. Like, all this music is, like, we've got different beats and that, but, like, the flows and that are kind of, kind of the same, you get me? So, like, uh, especially in this time, I think the UK like Sonics right now novelist just fully understands it like he, he gets it and to have him on there because he's I, I want I want I want like I said I want to do stuff in, in five years time when novelist is massive yeah mm. man could say raw them that was hustling like, them that was doing get me underground ones together so I'm blessed to have him on there as well 
Mm-hmm. Week of release of your album or just before? Like, you were in Tokyo? Yeah. How was that? Mad. It's your first crazy. time there? Yeah, crazy. First time I've ever been there. One of the maddest experiences of my whole life ever, ever, ever. It was nuts. Because they got like a grime scene out there as well, right? Yeah, bro. It's deep. It's crazy, man. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy, man. And it's like, I really love the Japanese because when they're into something, they're into it. Like, they're, they, 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 like, are super into it. So they don't just, like, half know about what's going on. They fully know. They know about rewinds. Like, yeah. when you reload. Like, certain places I'll go, yeah? Like, if I rewind the tune, the crowd would just be, like, they just look a bit... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It looks a bit weird and you feel a bit of a weird energy because they don't know what a rewind is. Yeah. But in Japan, when you rewind a tune, they make the noise like, blah, blah, like everything. Like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is sick, you get me? And then, um, yeah, from Japan, we got to fly the next day to Toronto. So I got two, I got two album drop days. <coughs> like we like, came out at 12 in Japan, we did the party. Then we went to go to um, Tower Records the next day. I remember walking in, looking at new releases, couldn't see nothing. I thought, oh, look, man. See, look, my hood, my hood mind kicked in. Like, oh, like, see, it never, it's, ne- it's never the same as, like, Jay-Z and them. Like, can't be a new releases in Tokyo. I've gone up to the guys, like, have you got like, Skepta? He said, oh, Skepta, like, upstairs. <laughs> Took me upstairs, going up the elevator, all my posters around. Seriously. Like, come onto the floor. Big. Oh, I was mad. Japanese was, writing as well. Oh, right? I couldn't read nothing. Yeah. I just saw Japanese, Japanese, Skepta, Japanese, 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 Konnichiwa, Japanese, Japanese, Japanese. That's it. Like, yeah. And I was like, this is like a super blessing, man, because I've never been there before. And I named my album Konnichiwa like years ago. So how that aligned for me to be there. And then I flew back into time to Toronto, got there, got to the show. They sold out, what was it, like 1,500 people. Yeah. Everybody knows every word of my album. I just released it this today. Damn. It was nuts, man. I'm I'm blessed, man. But like, you know, like I said, I was always gonna do what I was gonna do. So all this stuff is an addition, and I want to spread it onto other people because I believe that that's the one thing that happened before that messed everything up. Managers mm-hmm. took these artists away from everyone. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So oh, look, don't share it with those guys. Like, you know, don't be around them. Like, come and make tunes with these guys. Don't, there's not enough money for everyone to buy urban music and all mm-hmm. that nonsense, you get me? Now everyone can see there is enough for everybody. Mm-hmm. Don't compare me to Stormzy. Me and Stormzy are both legends in our own right. And we travel the world simultaneously together. Who is it that makes those comparisons? Everyone. People who try and put us, make us be against each other. I'm not, we're not going to be against, we, we see each other more than people think. We're mm. artists nowadays and we make a point of it to see each other and make sure there's no, nothing unsaid. You know what I'm saying? There's no unsaid nonsense, bruv. Is everything cool? Everything's cool. Yes, bruv. Greatness. Let's toast and let's do big things together. Because mm. the next time, if me and Stormzy touch a tune, that is top 10. That is top 10. That is shaking down the charts whether anyone likes it or not, you get what I'm yeah. saying? So, like, it's all about staying with that mind, in that mindset. Yeah. What's next for Boy Better now? But boy, man, greatness, man. Greatness, bro, because, like, I think, like, everyone's at an age now. As I was saying, like, it's like a crossfader, you get what I'm saying? Like a crossfader as a DJ, you start with energy as a younger, mm. you get what I'm saying? And on the other deck is knowledge, you get mm. what I'm saying? And, and wisdom. So when you're pushing the crossfader over in life, yeah, <clears throat> when you get to the middle, you're like at a nice point of like mm. energy and wisdom and knowledge, you get me? As you yeah. keep going old, like when you're like 60, you got all these smart, <coughs> but you're not energetic to do it like the youngest, you get me? And when you're younger, you got bare energy, yeah. but you're just dumb, you get what I'm saying? So with, when you're in the middle now, which yeah. is where we are, yeah. there's that energy, I could do it like the youths, yeah. you get what I'm saying? But I'm smart, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I've got, I've, I've got a good like head on my shoulders. It's a good analogy, man. I might have to like remix my mixer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, just have the crossfader right, and yeah. that's where we are right now, fam. And like, everyone in the crew is just like, tunnel vision, it's family, it's what we care about or nothing. Like, literally, there is no money that record labels can offer us no more. It's dead, it's just, it's no point. Mm. There's no point in saying these numbers to us anymore because mm. we've seen them, yeah? So now everyone's head's on putting this thing on the map in a way that all the kids of today never have to go through what we went through. Mm. And like I said, it's just 
that's yeah, that's the revenge. That's the revenge that that's what I'm on. Till I'm dead. And you doing the mixtape with Drake? Boy, I don't know what's gonna happen in twenty minutes. I don't even know what's <laughs> gonna happen anytime. So I, I, that would be sick. That would be sick because I would go nuts on that tape. I think I he go, needs to do it. I would go mad on that tape. <laughs> yeah. I'd go mad on that tape. Yeah. Trust. You but, can hear your influence on his music. He's saying certain things he never used to say. And his accent and his, like, his blatant things that he says and he's like... Right. Yeah. I, I, I hear that, man. I, to me, it's sick, man. I like that. You know, when, mm. when I first met Wiley, he was doing the same as well. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, that's his musical influence. I just think, like... Yeah, playing like you're not influenced from something, that's mm. when you are yeah, a bit yeah. of a dodgy person. And yeah. he thought, he wholeheartedly cosigns me and mm. puts out that, like, we're brothers, you see what I'm saying? So, man wanna, man wanna, you know what I'm saying, juggle around with vibes, they can do that, you get what I'm saying for me? So, like, I'm cool, I'm cool with that. What's next? Because you've, you've achieved a lot you've done a lot of pivotal landmark things that it might take a while for someone else to do because it just it, not everyone can be Skepton, not everyone can be Jamie, not everyone's got that same hustle, energy, drive and focus and determination to do it. So, but you've done it. Mm. So what's your next goals? Like, what do you want to see happen next? You, you're charting around the world. You, you're charting in America at the moment. Like, we making history. No one's done it like this before. Oh, no. So what man do you do next? Man said he was top 20 in what? 30 countries. Yeah. That sounds even mad saying that. It's mad, fam. Yeah. And it's scary. And it's exciting to to know that I'm actually leading a path that's never been done before. It's, it's, it's comfortable. It makes you comfortable when you're doing something that's been done. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it like that, but... This unsurety, you know, I embrace it, man. I embrace it. I'm actually walking in front. No one's done this before, and I don't know what's next. I don't. I, I, I don't know what's next. All I try and do is every day when I wake up. Yesterday doesn't exist anymore, and tomorrow is not here yet. So today I have to murk it. I have to murk this interview tonight at Coco. I need to murk that as well, and just keep murking. And, and we have to get that Drake and Skepton mixtape. Yeah. yeah <laughs> man, keep mur- if I keep murking, that's gonna happen. You see what I'm saying? So. I just got to, like, finesse every day and just keep, you know, keep my mind on the greatness, man. That's cool, man. All right, well, listen, like, Skeptic, man, I appreciate you doing this. Like, yeah. you said last year at Reading Festival, I'm going to do the interview with you, and it's like, I'm not going to lie, I saw a few interviews, and I was like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, <laughs> nah, you man. You stuck to your I word, man. You, man, I appreciate that. The truth, man, the yeah. truth, always. That was dope, thank you. Love, man. That's cool. Respect.